Yeah. Before we get going, you remember how I said the score bug is behind the in-stadium pitch clock, so sometimes you'll see a quicker violation when it looks like the clock is still at 1? This is what I meant. Notice how the stadium clock changes before the graphic does. It's a technical feed issue that causes latency. That's why there's a delay. It's a broadcast technicality. <laughs> Jeez, you can look it up. All right, on to the main event, runner's lane interference. Every year we seem to get in when it pours it rain situation where one rule repeats over and over again in games. Last year it was the collision at home plate. This year, we, I guess, early in the season we have RLI. You're familiar with 509 by now, and you know the diagram of where a runner can and cannot run and what actually constitutes interference if they run in the red area. So you asked us to look at Chicago. Let's go. Little dribbler barehanded by Gomes, and it hits the run. It was a legal maneuver by the base runner, so no interference. You see him run down the line here. He has to have his feet inside the line. I I'm telling you, that's interference. The ball hits the runner in the hand. We go back to our diagram with the reds and the greens, and we look and see that the runner is in the red. That's illegal. The runner is not within the lanes or touching the lane line which means that the ball hitting the runner, the runner's not protected, that is interference with the fielder taking the throw. You get hit with the ball, you prevent the fielder from taking the throw. I think it's interference. What do you think? That's how bad it was, right? I don't know what you're supposed to do as a base runner when the base is in fair territory. So let's go back to our diagram. Sorry at westofficials.com. Got to get out of the way for now. The base is in fair territory, but the runner's supposed to run in the lane in foul territory. Let's talk about the history of this rule. Back in the early days of baseball, 1879-ish, there was no runner's lane. First base was half in fair territory, half in foul territory. In 1882 for the National League and 1884 for the American Association, the runner's lane was introduced in an effort to reduce injury. First base was still half in foul and half in fair territory, so the fielder got the fair side and the runner was supposed to go in the lane so that the runner could go to the foul side. In the 1890s, things started getting messed up. The bases went fully fair, so that any ball that hit any part of the base to make it easier would be considered a fair ball, batted ball. That also meant that the runner's lane now only led to a small sliver of the base as opposed to an entire half for the runner, making this rule really complicated and also necessitating an additional exception to be added, stating that a runner legally within the lane may exit it one stride prior in order to touch first base. And they didn't know if he'd ever play again, right? I mean, that's This proved contrary to the original objective, which was to reduce injury, because now the runners allowed the entirety of first base, providing the exception to the rule, they exit it, having run within the lane legally prior to getting there, which increases risk at the base because of the legal positional conflicts between batter and runner. Is hit. He might throw him out. Oh, there's a collision at first. For instance, with a safety base, no collision would have occurred on this play because the runner would have been running in foul territory and the fielder would have remained in fair territory. And, oh, close play, it hits him in the back. It hits him and he's out of that running ball. It looks like it's a mark. Anyway, you wanted me to take a look at the Brewers announcing, so I will. Because you, you establish your own running lane, depending on where you start. It's kind of a, a waste of chalk, to be honest. Umpires typically, at least the way they've described it to me, is they're giving three feet on either side, depending on where the runner or the batter runner establishes. Okay, I think I know the problem here. The Brewers broadcaster is talking about the three foot avoidance of a tag rule, which is different than the runner's lane. The three feet tag rule requires, well, you know, a tag, whereas the runner's lane requires, well, a throw. That's the main difference between the two. If there's a throw to first base, you're looking at the runner's lane. If there's a tag attempt, you're looking at the three foot avoidance of a tag rule. The runner's lane and the tag avoidance three foot area for plays like this, the Red Sox, Oakland one, it's just coincidental that the runner's lane is there. The chalk in that case is meaningless, 100%. So the broadcaster is right about that, had this been a tag play. But because the Chicago play is a thrown ball, the runner's lane does apply. Meanwhile, the three foot to avoid a tag rule doesn't apply because, well, there's no tag. Neither coach standing in a coaching box. Remember when Ed Montague ejected Larry Bow in 2008 for not standing in the coaching box? Anyway, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Let's go to 
the Nationals game because there was another RLI play you wanted me to look at. Who is a quality assurance coach with the Rays. Williams. Tough play for the important thing Williams. to remember is the runner's lane doesn't start until 45 foot mark. So the runner can actually be in fair territory until that point. Once you get to that point, you have to be within the lane. Touching the line is in the lane. Coach with the Rays. Williams. Tough play for Dominic Not easy Williams. to figure this out, but what I want to point out is we talked about how Miller or Torres in Chicago was in great position to make a definitive call. Not so much here in Washington. So if you're a younger umpire, do what Miller and Torres did. Don't do what you just saw here. Well, whatever it is you're not doing, go don't do it somewhere else. All right, the dust has settled, and this is your very That's next play. play. Where was Loki? Look at the English on that thing. Crawling his way to a throw, and it gets away from Dominic Smith. Similar story. What do you have here? The runner knocks the glove off the first baseman's hand. Is that interference given every rule that we've talked about today? Again, sometimes these rules have a habit of showing up in seemingly every game or every day of baseball. So if you see it, hopefully by now you know what to do if there's a runner's interference play. And if someone asks you about it, you can explain that, hey, I know the rule. Visit us online at closecallsports.com. Subscribe and we'll see you on the site. Has any ball club had worse luck on calls like that than our club? I don't think so.